Hi, this is Arson Cash Cashian. I'm the head buyer and general manager here at the Boulder Bookstore. And this is another edition of Inside the Boulder Bookstore, where we talk to different people who either work here or work with us. And we're doing a special series, and this is the first one of them, focusing on our 50-year history. We turned 50 this September, and we're going to have a big party for customers and you know whoever wants to come on September 17th here at the store at 3 o'clock. But leading into that, we thought we'd delve into a little bit of the history. So I'm here with Warren today, and Warren is our longest tenured bookseller. He uh, worked at the store in the 80s, then he went away and then came back in the mid-90s and has been here ever since. So Warren, you're the only person besides David at this point who was at the store in the 80s. Yeah. And uh, what can you tell, back then we had two stores. We, we didn't right. have this location at all, right? We right. had 1133. One down, run oh, down the street, yeah. and then we had the one by McGuckin's, which a lot of people probably do not remember. And right. you mostly worked in that one by McGuckin's. Correct. Can you, can you tell yeah. us what it was like there and, and what, what book selling was like back in the 80s? Yeah, well, it was. I started there in the late or the early spring of 1980. So I guess the, the store had been established seven years earlier. So the downtown store, I think, was doing pretty well. That store just opened in 79, I think. So I was there after the first year, and it was it was a you know a version of the Boulder Bookstore, but in a much more residential area, much slower paced, um, you know, a little, a little more low key than the downtown store. Things were always hopping, even in the 80s. So yeah, we only had I think we had four or five employees besides the manager, and um, the way we kept um, track of things in those days was um, index cards, you know, three by five index cards, which was r really just a retail bookstore version of a library card catalog, which was universal in those days. And as I say, only people of a certain age know what I'm talking about, the card catalogs. <laughs> But, so, um, so what would you do with these index cards? I mean, would they be on the books that were on the shelves, or would they just no, be? We, they may have been at the main store, but we, we were small enough. I think we just had certain people assigned certain areas to keep a, keep an eye on and kind of got to know the, the stock and what we needed. And as we sold things, I, I think all we did was write them down on, on sheets of uh, paper, um, you know, just eight and a half by 11 standard notebook type paper. And once a week, there was a, a wholesaler now, it was a big warehouse, mostly mass market paperbacks. Um, trade paperbacks weren't a big deal then, and we didn't, it didn't have very many um, hardcovers. We'd go out there once a week with our lists and replenish what had sold um, that we could. You know, they were all organized by um, publisher. And there was a, a bigger store in um, Denver off I-25 I where, where the Grizzly Rose ended up being. I don't know if that's still there. Yeah, the Grizzly Rose is there. Okay, well that's the store where Gordon was. Um, and that was the big distributor. That was the big one. Had lots of new hardcover, all the new releases, new hardcovers, trade paperbacks, mass market. I think we went there every other week. And um, anyway, that's how we replenished things. There were, you know, mostly, we could get a good number of things there. But I, I know we did publisher orders. We'd, we'd still meet with publisher reps. Um, less frequently than now, of course, and, and you know a lot of the smaller presses uh, they didn't even have reps. So um, I'm not, I don't even. I guess we're, if we couldn't get it from Gordon's or, or Dylan, I'm not sure what we did. Yeah. So it was a totally different business because now everything yeah. is on the computer. Yeah. See, that, that, there's nothing. The first time somebody told me, well, Dylan's is going online. I said, well, what are you talking about? What does that mean? I didn't, I didn't even know. <laughs> Whatever year that was. But um, and we had the the big thing too is special orders. Stop orders, single title order plan. Every year, the ABA then sent it out a giant red three ring binder um, that had publisher information about how to or how to do a single title order from a publisher. That, you know, you, they started out sending checks, and then when I came back, we were still doing stop orders in, in the 90s, but um, we, we had a store credit card. You know, mm -hmm. call well, we, we still do, do them in a way. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's really a customer service thing, right? Because right. You're buying a $20 book and you got to end up paying, usually it's a, a bad discount, so you're paying $15 for the $20 book <laughs> yeah. and then they charge you $6 to yeah. ship it. Yeah. Well, so you pay $21 so, yeah. for the $20 Oftentimes, book. Yeah, we have to mark them up. Um, yeah, we have yeah. to mark them up a little bit so it's not, <laughs> not yeah. a big profit item. So, yeah. um, you know, was David around much back in those days? Did yeah. Yeah. He was back <clears throat> He was back and forth a lot and, you know, being next to McGuckins was also... Oh, he, he loves he, McGuckins. He loved bringing us boxes of books out, you know, dropping them off and then... Go to go to McGuckins, and that was that was a good good location for a store too. It gave us high visibility, free parking. 
we always call back and forth between the stores of, hey, we're out of this book. Do you have a copy? And say, yeah, we got one. Send the, send the customer Smith down to the store. We'll hold it for him. Mm-hmm. I mean, that store lives on. Um, a lot of people might not know. When, when that store closed, we opened this room, the right. upper north room in the store. So mm-hmm. most of the cases the fixtures, that you, yeah. the fixtures you right. see in this room yeah. were the fixtures from what we called store two, right. the McGuckin right. store. Right. Um, and of course, then they filled that up with plants. That's the, if people want to know where that was, it's right where they have all those plants yeah, there. Yeah, that big cupola thing. That's yeah. right there. Yeah, it was pretty prominent. I mean, you go into that parking lot, and that was one of the first things you'd see next, next to the Uh huh. So and then when you good. came back, so you worked at, at what was it, Cover to Cover uh-huh. in uh, Table, Table Mesa, Mesa. about 10 years. And then you came back here in the mid-90s, right. and we were in this location, yes. and this room was already open, so it was yeah. fully... That's right. Well, what did you think coming back to the store? Like, what did you, what were the, what were some of the changes or the differences or, you know, what, what yeah, did anything was, strike um, you at that point in time? Just, you know, I always thought the, the 1133 location was a, was a good size store. But when you know, look at this store now, it's so much bigger. You go into that, it's a women's athletic clothing place and you go in there and it's tiny. You know, mm-hmm. and we're here and, and you just hear customers all the time coming in, you know, visitors from the downtown mall say, this place goes on forever. And it does, you know, upstairs, downstairs, nooks and crannies everywhere. So did it take you some time to adjust to that when you first got back? Like, my God, I, I don't know, you, everywhere. you know, it was, it was great because all the space that you know, cover to cover was much smaller too. So you know, all the space we had in the stock, and and in those days, if we looked it up in the computer and said where it was, it was usually there, <laughs> which, was, which was a good thing. It doesn't always happen, um, you know. Now, yeah, <laughs> one I reason mean, or another. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, I was quite impressed, and everybody, uh, the people who, who were specializing, you know, doing the magazines, doing the card buying, whatever. Everybody was really good at their job. The S and R chart people, you know. It was, so it was it was great coming back. I was I was you know actually lucky. I was not even sure I would get hired back, but I was I was very happy that that happened, and it was a, it was a good thing. So. Well, it was a good thing for us. I'm very happy. I was actually the hiring manager at that point. So I was uh, I would say you were maybe my that's best right. hire. Yeah. So like uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, that, that, you came back. Still, yeah, that, that's right. Yeah, I was. Um, do you have any favorite memories or anything you want to share, or, or, or strange things, or goofy things, or? Well, yeah, so many things that happened over the years. Yeah, not, you know, nothing really jumps out anymore. Were you here when we had that customer Maggie? Do you remember her way back in the day? Yes, yes. She Maggie. would always ask for me and Liesl, and right. she would. She wanted to order every single Dover thrift book. Oh, is that right? Yes, that's what uh, ended up happening. She kept coming in and asking if we had certain ones. Dover. <laughs> and then finally she came in and was like 500 different Dover yeah, yeah. books. Yeah, yeah. She, yeah, she was definitely um, a memorable character. Yeah, it's she like, didn't want to speak to anybody. No, for and she was very particular too. If you, yeah. didn't, you didn't give her good customer service, she let you know. <laughs> and she probably let you know too. Watch out for that guy or that, uh-huh. that person. I'm a good employee. All right. Well, how do you hey. think if you – how do you think the store has changed from 95 to now? So when you got back to now, like what are you, or maybe it's just book selling in general or the culture in general. Like what, yeah. what do you think is the biggest difference I, that people would see if they walked into the store in 1995? Well, I don't know if they see that much thing. You know, it's still, we have a lot more sidelines than we've ever had. Um, but you know, the, the books, they, they just, you know, just constantly talk about them. Right? You know, selection is, you know, and a lot of them are really good. And, um, it's just you know much more computer driven now, or com- completely computer driven now. So it's a, it's a whole different world that way. But um, and and the astonishing thing that still surprises everybody is post COVID things have been great. You know, yeah. business has been really good, which uh, it's hard to say what you know. It's just that people got so tired of being cooped up, and who didn't come you know downtown for that year, that 2020, or two years they're, even. Yeah, they're still coming in. You know. I haven't been back since then, and I'm glad you're still here. Yeah, I think I think that's been a very gratifying thing as we yeah. approach our 50th year. Is we seem to be more appreciated <laughs> than really ever before. Good. Yeah. So I, I certainly enjoy that. Yeah. But yeah. People seem really happy enjoy that we're it while still we here. Can. Yeah. Who knows? Who knows how long it's gonna last? But it's it's still going now. So you know, touch wood. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much, Warren, for oh, yeah. sharing your thoughts with us. Sure. And so you've been watching the Inside the Boulder Bookstore with our bookseller, Warren, and we are having a 50th anniversary celebration on September 17th. So please come. We'll have cake. That must be a good reason <laughs> to come, right? So uh, thank you for watching, and please subscribe to our YouTube channel if you like what you see.